Okay, so you are an aspiring author. Maybe you even have a couple of books under your belt, but you have a lot of different ideas for different stories, and some of them fall into different genres. So the question is, if you're going to write multiple genres, what are the rules around that? Should you write multiple genres? Should you have multiple pen names if you're going to do that? Is it just for vastly different genres, or should you do it if it's the same genre but different age groups, like one's geared toward YA and one's adult? Um, aren't multiple pen names harder to sustain? And shouldn't we be trying to simplify and make this easier for ourselves, right? There's so many questions around this, and this is what I'm going to be discussing today. So if that's something that you are at all interested in, if you're someone who has more than one type of genre in mind for something you want to write, then this episode is for you. Stay tuned, and we're going to talk about the ins and outs of multiple pen names. Hi there, aspiring fiction author. Welcome to Fiction Author Business School. Do you want to write your stories with ease and confidence? Do you find yourself Googling how to write a fiction book or how to write a character arc? Do you want to create a fiction empire, but you can't even finish the story you're currently working on and you find yourself doubting it will even be good enough? Hi, I'm Liesl. I too have been writing stories since I was just a kid. I wanted to do something about my fiction writing dreams, but got information overload every time I looked for writing help because there's just so much out there on the internet. I wanted confidence that I wouldn't disappoint my readers and a plan to publish regularly. I knew the foundation of any author career, including the marketing aspect, is a stellar and well-written story, but I didn't know how to be sure that my story was solid. I went on a journey to figure out what really makes readers tick and how to incorporate those addictive elements into my story. In this podcast, you'll find specific tactical fiction writing tips, solutions to writing more words more efficiently, and secrets to mastering your author mindset. So put on your fuzzy slippers, grab a notebook and pen and some chocolate, and let's write some fiction. Okay, so this is a topic that actually my um, author critique group uh, asked me to cover. Um, I actually get a lot of ideas <laughs> from my author critique group. Whatever we are talking about that week, chances are there's going to be a podcast episode about it. Um, and they asked me to cover this because several of them are getting ready to publish, in some cases for the first time, and they're wondering about this. I actually do have multiple pen names for multiple genres. So... I have been around the block a few times, and I do kind of know the ins and outs of it. So let's talk about this. First of all, it's very common. If you're someone who wants to write multiple genres, lots of people are doing that nowadays. It used to be, before the digital revolution, that you couldn't really do that. Um, you would become known as a, as a mainstream author, as a traditionally published author for a particular genre, and because of marketing constraints, you just had to stay within that genre. So even if Stephen King had wanted to write a sweet YA romance, he really wouldn't have been able to. You know, his publisher would have insisted that he stay with horror because that's what he was known for and that's what made them the money. But now we've had the digital revolution and there is Amazon and anyone can upload anything to Amazon anytime they want. So things have changed. We can write multiple genres if we want and thank goodness because I write three if not four of them depending on how you look at it. Um, so the question is should you have multiple pen names? I'm going to say right out of the gate that my overall answer is yes, but I'm going to qualify that um, and say also that it's, it is going to depend on the situation a little bit. Um, I have met or talked to or seen interviews with several authors who write multiple genres under the same pen name and they make it work. They say that it does work, they don't have a problem, um, they sell all different genres of their books under the same name, and one is not keeping another from selling. However... I have noticed that in each of those cases, it seems to me that they are not using Amazon in a big way to sell their books. So people like that are people who have big email lists and they're very loyal people, readers on their email list, who will buy just about anything that they write. So what should you take away from that? Number one, you can do whatever you want and you can make it work. But depending on how you're going to go about selling your books, some ways are easier than others. If you're really not going to be dependent on Amazon or any algorithm to sell your books for you, then that might work for you. Um, but before it works, you're probably going to need a pretty loyal email list. And if you don't have that yet, then it's going to be difficult to sell your books uh, because you just haven't built that up yet. Um, so it can happen and it can work, but overall I would say that probably 99% of you are going to need Amazon's help to sell your books, especially if you are on your first book. 
Um, okay, I have um, people mowing lawns outside my window, and it's really loud to me, so I hope it's not too loud to you, but you can probably hear it in the background. Um, so again, I, I am not exclusive to Amazon. I am wide, but even so, Amazon uh, accounts for a big chunk of my income, and I do want to use their algorithm to help me sell books. I do run Amazon ads. And if you're going to be a serious author that wants to sell a lot of books, chances are you're going to need to use Amazon ads at some point, so you need to plan for it. And planning for it is where the multiple pen names comes in. Um, why do you need multiple pen names? Believe it or not, <laughs> it's not just for anonymity. It can be for that, but that's not the reason we're talking about here today. So, of course, people will use pen names. Um, when it comes to anonymity, there's really only two reasons. Either it's because they're writing something they don't want to be known for, like uh, Smut. Uh, E.L. James is not her real name, and her real name was always kind of kept private, right? But um, So there's that, or there's, you know, that it's a social experiment, and they want to see if they can sell books under a different pen name. So actually, there is a story about Stephen King. He did this. It was years ago, probably decades ago now. He started selling books under the name Richard Bachman. In his case, it was actually the same kind of books. I mean, they might have been slightly different, but they were still thrillers and, you know, edging over into the horror genre. It was pretty much the same thing he was writing as Stephen King. And he just wanted to see if he could sell books under that name. Now, to be fair... <laughs> This would have been very different for him than for one of us doing this today. He was a mainstream author. He was already a millionaire at that point. He had a huge marketing team behind him, so he could afford to do this and put a lot of money, like dump a lot of money into it. So as Richard Bachman, he did pretty well. He was selling like several hundred thousand copies of those books, and they were doing pretty well because he had written them, so obviously he knows how to write, and they were pretty good books. Um, if we were doing that today and we did not have the resources he has, it would not be that easy for us. But he ended up stopping doing that because he got kind of bored. I mean, he proved to himself that he could write under that name and make decent money, but he also was not making as much as he was under Stephen King. So when people asked him, why did you stop writing as Richard Bachman? He said it was because, well, when I wrote something as Richard Bachman, it would sell, you know, whatever it was, 250,000 copies. Now, most of us would kill for those kind of sales, right? But when he wrote something under Stephen King, he was selling 4 million copies. So he proved he could do it, but he was making way more money under Stephen King because that's what he was known for and that's the marketable name. So he stopped doing it. Um, but the point is, in that case, he was just looking for anonymity to see if he could build up an audience without the name that he had already become known for. Uh, J.K. Rowling did the same thing when she was writing as Robert Galbraith, and she still is, I think. Um, I've only read one of her books under that pen name, but obviously they weren't selling quite as well as she wanted because she conveniently leaked it that that was actually her, and sales shot through the roof when she did that. So she clearly makes a lot more money under J.K. Rowling than she does under just Robert Galbraith, but in both of those cases, they were just looking for some anonymity for the social experiment of it all. Um, but believe it or not, that is not the reason that you or I would want to use a pen name, not for anonymity. It would be... In our case, because of the SEO. Now, what do I mean by that? Everything is algorithm driven, driven today on the internet, and your author name is going to be associated with your genre and with the keywords around your genre. So, what I let me illustrate. I sell my crime fiction under my initials and my last name, L.K. Hill. Okay, so if you look up that name, you're going to find my crime fiction. And that means, especially for the Amazon algorithm, that the author name, L.K. Hill, is associated with crime drama and with all of the keywords that you would associate with crime drama. So it's going to be associated with phrases like uh, mystery, uh, murder mystery, serial killer fiction, um, detective mystery series, things like that. Whatever the keywords are for my genre, my pen name is going to be associated with them. So then, if I suddenly decide to write a completely different genre, like a sweet historical romance, that confuses the algorithm, and they're going to start sending the wrong readers to the wrong books, okay? Because what will happen is Amazon will say, okay, um... 
this person just clicked on the Sweet Romance by L.K. Hill and bought it. Well, then that means that this reader might be interested in other books by L.K. Hill, and they will send that reader to my crime fiction. Now, if that reader only likes Sweet Romance and is not at all interested in dark, gritty serial killer fiction, they're not going to buy those other books, and they're going to wonder why Amazon is showing them that. Okay, so it's going to confuse the algorithm, it's going to confuse the readers, and you're going to be sending the wrong readers to the wrong books. That is especially detrimental if you're running ads, because what happens is that you're sending readers to those genres that they don't want and you have to pay when they click on them and they may click on them because they see your author name but then they will read through the description the blurb and they'll go oh I don't want to read that that's not for me so you're paying for clicks and not getting any sales which means you are flushing money down the toilets on your ads and that's everybody's worst nightmare right that is why you need separate pen names if you're going to be selling on Amazon you want to it's sort of like branding but really it's just SEO it's making sure that your pen name and the associated keywords are all relevant to that genre so that you are sending the right readers to the right genre via the right keywords. If any of those are not in alignment, then you're going to have a hard time getting anyone to see your book, much less buy it. Um, I've even had people tell me that, and I've seen this from other authors, that, you know, they were running, say, Amazon ads to their books and they were doing okay with it. You know, they were, the ads were profitable. They were making a little bit of money and then they accidentally started running ads to a book that didn't align with their book. And it might not have been that, you know, I'm using like a really, um, very, two different, very different genres, sweet romance and serial killer fiction. But sometimes it can be two genres with underneath the same umbrella. So like maybe, um, it's a action adventure novel, a men's action adventure novel, and then they send it to men's um, science fiction, but it's a little bit different. And even that can be enough that it confuses the algorithm. And suddenly the ads that they had before that were working stopped working. And the reason is because you tried to send people from these other genres, even if it's like subgenres and sub subgenres that are not like yours, you started running ads to those books and those people aren't going to click on your book because it's different than the genre they like to read. And then the algorithm says, wait a minute, they're trying to get these people to click on their books and these people don't like their book. So now I don't know who to show their book to and they will stop showing it even on those ads that were working before. So you can really shoot yourself in the foot if you don't know what your genre is. Um, and that's just something that you have to figure out. Only you <laughs> can tell the algorithm who to show your book to and who would like your book based on the genre and the tropes and everything that's in it. But again, that's why you need pen names if you're going to be writing different genres. Because if you have two vastly different genres or even somewhat different genres under the same pen name, it's going to confuse the algorithm. It's going to make it really difficult for you to get Amazon ads to work for you. And without those, it's going to be really hard to scale and make any decent money. So that is the basic reason for why you would need pen names. Um, in terms of what can you allow, age group is, I don't know, it depends on the situation. I think if you keep the content relatively the same, you could do different age groups under the same pen name. And what I mean by that is, you know, maybe if you normally write YA science fiction and then you decided to write an adult science fiction, those are close enough just geared toward a slightly different demographic that you would probably be okay keeping them under the same pen name. You would just want to make sure that people know who this is geared toward. Um, the only way I think that wouldn't work is if you are going, you know, maybe you're, to use the same example, you're writing science fiction both times, but you go from something that's like a sweet YA to something that's really adult and has a lot of adult content in it. That's going to be harder because people really are picky about how much content is in their books. People who read sweet are not going to read really spicy and people who read really spicy are not interested in sweet. So... Um, and, and, you know, I'm talking in terms of romance, but it could be true of violence, too. If they're really looking for some PG to PG-13 violence and then you move up to an adult book and suddenly there's just gore and entrails everywhere, it's going to do the same thing. It's really going to turn off your readers. Um, I don't know that with those that it would necessarily confuse the algorithm, and that's why I'm saying you could probably keep them under the same pen name, but you, st you still, if you're mixing 
content or age groups like that, and there's a major contrast between the two, then you might want to think about separate pen names because at the very least you're going to have angry readers and you're going to end up with bad reviews. So as you can see, there's not one cut and dried answer here. It's really going to depend on how different your genres are, how different the stories you're writing are, and whether that's going to either confuse the algorithm or turn your readers off. Um, you have to decide that. It's going to be a judgment call for you. So I remember back when I got started, I was keeping all of my genres under one pen name for a while, not for very long. It was probably only for the first year or two. And I don't think I sold a whole lot of books back then, and I, <laughs> I don't even think it was because I was keeping them under the same pen name. I actually think back then it was probably easier to do that, and the algorithm has become more sophisticated, which means it's pickier, and the SEO is better, so it's actually harder to do that these days. I think the reason I didn't sell anything is because I knew absolutely nothing about book marketing back then, so I wasn't even attempting to sell my books. I was writing them and hoping that somehow they would start selling on their own, you know. Um, so, but it's just one of those things you have to figure out. But my, my basic advice would be if you're writing separate genres or two stories that are vastly different from one another, whether it's in genre or spice level or content level or age group or whatever the case may be, it is probably better to use a pen name. That just makes it easier to keep them separate and you're not going to be frustrated and pulling your hair out trying to get them to sell online. Now, let's talk a little bit about the question of simplifying. It is difficult to maintain more than one pen name. It absolutely is. You've got different audiences to sell to. You have different keywords to keep track of. It does make it more complicated. But I would encourage you not to complicate it more than it has to be. You will have to keep different lists of keywords, especially for selling in Amazon ads. That's definitely true. You will have to keep track of different audiences. Even for Facebook ads, you're going to be targeting different audiences. But all that said, um, I don't know that you need to necessarily keep, you know, three sets of social media accounts, one for each um, pen name. I don't know that you need to send out three different newsletters. You certainly can do those things if you want, but you have to understand the way that different audiences react to things. When you have people who are actually willing to follow you on social media or to join your newsletter, those are pretty loyal readers. The fact that they want to hear from you all the time, they want to see your posts in their feed, it shows that they're willing to look at whatever you are willing to show them. So it's less of a big deal to have multiple genres in those situations. Um, people who maybe do want to see your post on social media, but only for a certain genre, they probably won't actually follow your account. They will just come across you because they're looking at hashtags. So if you have someone who, let's say you write three genres and one of them is sci-fi and one of them is romance, and you have someone who likes sci-fi, but they don't like romance, they probably wouldn't follow your account, but they could still find your books because they might be looking under the hashtags for sci-fi and they could come across any post that you have made and put that hashtag on. So this is where hashtags come in handy. You can use them to reach readers who are not following you. But again, that doesn't mean you need three different sets of social media accounts for your three different pen names. I would keep all of those together. Um, the same with your email list. Now I have three different, um, different genres and really like I said it's four because two of them are under sci-fi fantasy but they're such vastly different genres under sci-fi fantasy that I'm counting them as, as two separate genres. I keep those readers separate using tags in ConvertKit and most email responders have ways to do that so that you can keep your list separate and know who you need to sell to. Generally I and I actually pulled my list about this because I got sick of sending out three different newsletters. It was just a lot of work. And I asked them if I could send it, if they would care, if I sent it all out in the same newsletter with just different headings. So I have parts that are geared toward one genre or another. And then I do have readers who will read everything, so they want all of it. So really, I was going to have to send out one for each genre plus an all readers email. And that's just a lot of work. I mean... If you have a VA that can do it, that definitely makes it easier. But if you can consolidate it all into one and then just put different headings and they'll skim through and take what they want, that makes it much, much easier. And everyone who responded to me, I mean, obviously my entire list didn't respond and most of them didn't care to respond, but the ones that did said, oh, I don't mind that. I'd rather get 
one email that addresses it all than four different emails anyway, because that's more to read in my inbox. Um, because some of these people, maybe they don't read all the genres I write, but what if they read two of them? Then they would get, be getting two emails. Or what if they read three of them out of the four? They'd be getting three emails from me. And they're saying, no, 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 just put it all in one and we'll skim and take what we need. And they liked that idea. And I've done that ever since. And it works beautifully. I have a wonderful open rate. I have a wonderful um, engagement rate for my list. And I keep all of the genres in one newsletter. So you can make it work. Um, you do need to keep your audience is separate, especially where the algorithm and SEO are concerned. But other than that, do what works for you. Your more loyal readers are not going to care if you're putting more than one genre into things. You know, you're going to get the odd complainer every once in a while, but you're going to get that anyway. And so I would say do what you absolutely have to do to keep them separate, meaning I'm kind of repeating myself here, but the SEO, the keywords, different pen names for different genres, anything that's vastly different, just keep in mind that everything needs to be relevant to the book that you are trying to sell. So if there are two different heat levels, if there are two different content levels, if there are two different age groups, if there are two different genres or subgenres, then yes, you're going to need different pen names for them. But beyond that, just don't overcomplicate it. Simplify it as much as you can, wherever you can. I would not try to <laughs> maintain, you know, three or four different sets of social media account. It's hard enough to keep up with social media as it is. And I am not one who posts my books on social media all that often because I just don't have time for it. Keep in mind, even though it can be a boost to your sales, you don't generally sell a whole lot of books on social media. And that's all time that you are not spending writing. So don't shoot yourself in the foot with that. But this is the gist about pen names as I see it. I do have different pen names for my different books or my different genres, I should say, and that works very well for me. Um, keep in mind that if you're going to write a different genre than what you currently have, it is a lot of work. You are going to have to kind of rebrand under that key name, and it's like starting from scratch. You're going to have to build a new audience, a new email list, a new um, set of bookbub readers, all of that for your new pen name. But if it's something that you really want to do because you have a passion for that genre and you want to write that too, then do it. Um, you know, nothing worth doing was ever easy. There's always hard work involved. So don't be afraid of that. Just be realistic about what it's going to take. Yeah, um, I think that's pretty much what I have for that. I hope this answered some of your questions. And um, if you have any more, please feel free to send them in. Um, Remember that I have SpeakPipe, which is uh, www.speakpipe.com forward slash the prolific author, and that will be linked up in the show notes. So if you have anything that you want to ask me that I did not cover here about this topic, or if you have a topic in mind that you would like me to cover, um, go ahead and send it in. You can also email me or um, get a hold of me on social media uh, with those same requests. Yeah, but don't be afraid to spread out into different genres because that's a blessing for us that we live in a time when we can do that and I think that everybody should follow their passion and write what is on their heart to write okay remember if you're interested in hearing about my course as soon as it comes available put your name on the early interest list for fiction by design that just means that you'll receive an email when the course comes out with more information and I will link that up in the show notes as well everyone have a wonderful week of writing and of marketing because that is part of writing and I will see you next week. Same time, same place. Bye. Thanks so much for listening today. Before you go, would you be willing to do me a solid? If you found any value at all in this episode today, would you be willing to share it with other authors just like you in the hopes that they might find some value in it as well? Happy story crafting this week. Remember only you can bring the world, the unique story that you are trying to tell. Only you can succeed in your own unique way in getting it out of your mind and your heart and into a medium where it can reach thousands, if not millions, of salivating readers. You don't have to worry about failure, because there is always a market for awesome.